to Dr. Climate Change. Today we are talking about biofuels. Biofuels. What are biofuels? These are biomass-based fuels produced from variety of biomass feed, feedstocks such as animal fats, oil crops, sugar plants, starchy plants, cellul cellulosic biomass, and so on and so forth. And uh, such food stock can be transformed into liquid and gaseous fuel such as biodiesel, pure plant oil, or straight vegetable oil, bioethanol, biogas, sink gas, ethyl tertiary beetle ester, and all that. The main liquid biofuels, these are biodiesel and bioethanol, and these are the alternatives to biodiesel and gasoline, respectively. Why do you need biofuels? The first thing is climate change impacts. We are having climate change with uh, climate changes here with us, and they are very serious impacts. And uh, that's why we need biofuels so that we can mitigate against climate change. The other thing is rising demand and cost of, of fossil fuels, and that's why we have to consider biofuels. Number three is energy security. We need to have energy security. And, uh, we, we, and when we look at uh, fossil fuels, they can be depleted and therefore energy security may not be there. The other thing is, the last thing here is rural economic development. Because with biofuels, rural areas where you can grow these crops, the biomass, will have a change in economically. Let's look at the overview on climate change, global warming, and greenhouse gas mitigation. Climate change. This is, the climate change is any long-term significant change in average temperature, precipitation, and weed patterns. So temperature here we are talking about how hot it can be. Precipitation is the rainfall, and then the weed patterns. You can also explain it as a large-scale long-term shift in the planet's weather patterns and average temperatures. And the UNFCC refers to climate change as a change of climate that is attributed directly or indirectly to human activities that alter the composition of the global atmosphere. Climate change was apparent from the mid to late 20th century onwards and is attributed largely to the increased level of atmospheric carbon dioxide produced mainly by the use of fossil fuels. Number two, now we've looked at climate change. Number two, we look at the global warming. What is global warming? This phenomenon of increasing average air temperatures, that is average air temperatures near the surface of the earth over the past one or two centuries. So near the earth, uh, surface of the earth, there is an increase in air temperatures uh, or seen for the last Two centuries. In 2013, IPCC reported that the interval between 1880 and 2012, 2012 saw an increase in global warm average surface temperature of approximately 0 0.9 degrees Celsius or 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, IPCC predicts that the global mean surface temperature would increase between 3 and 4 degrees Celsius by the year 2100, which is a, a big increase, 3 and 4 degrees Celsius. Let's look at uh, what is global warming. Here we have a, a demonstration. You can see the, there's a planet there and there's a thermometer. We, we, are, we are shown there's an arrow going up, so the temperatures are rising. And we are told here, warmer atmosphere and oceans. So there will be warmer atmosphere and oceans. As we've been told, the surface temperatures are rising. Then there will be rising sea levels because some of this ice will be melting, changing rainfall patterns, and there will be expansion. Global warming means there's expansion of deserts in the subtropics because we are told there will be changing in precipitation. More flooding will, be, will occur in coastal areas. 
there will be melting of polar ice caps, and this melting of polar ice caps is the one which is bringing flooding in the coastal areas. Melting of glaciers, and um, no, it's the melting of glaciers which will be bringing flooding in the coastal areas. Then there will be more extreme weather events. Extreme weather events are like flooding, drought, uh, fires, and all that. Then there will be ocean acidification, the extinction of animal and planet species, because when the temperatures increase, some of these animals and plants may not survive the new temperature. Then there will be food security threat for humans. As we all know, agriculture depends on precipitation and the temperatures, so that when the temperatures are high, there's no rainfall, there might be no food, for, for uh, there will be no crops and no crop yields. So food security a threat for humans. The gradual increase in the Earth's temperature caused by high levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So in, uh, we've been shown what global warming is all about. And here we can see the greenhouse effect. You can see the Earth and we can see the atmosphere here. This is the atmosphere, and you can see there's the sun here. So what is happening here? These rays of the sun, the heat is coming and striking the earth, and some of these rays are uh, reflected back into the atmosphere, and here is written, some solar radiation is reflected by the earth and the atmosphere. And you can see here in the atmosphere, there are some, there are some, uh, some, some clouds and all that. And here we are being told how, about how the solar radiation is absorbed by the air surface and it warms it. And here you can see also there's infrared radiation is emitted from the air surface and you can see it's going back to the atmosphere. And uh, the sun we are being told here is solar radiation powers the climate system. So what is the greenhouse effect? Some of the infrared radiation passes through the atmosphere, but most is absorbed and re-emitted in all directions by the greenhouse gases. So the greenhouse gases are around here in the atmosphere uh, by greenhouse gas molecules and clouds. The effect of this is to warm the Earth's surface and lower that uh, and the lower atmosphere. So, so what we are being shown, the illustration here is the greenhouse effect and you can see all the heat is coming from the sun but this heating the earth and some of it is reflected back to the atmosphere heating the uh, the air around the the earth so let's look at the impacts of climate change on human health in this illustration here you can see we also have the map of the of the planet and we are being told climate change warmer temperatures shifting rainfall patterns more frequent and or intense extreme events and we've looked at the extreme events like flooding drought and all that and sea level rise and we can see here in red disruptions to societal systems here and then diminished food production which we've discussed damages to infrastructures which are when the floods come relocation of communities communities are displaced declines in tourism because people are not coming to your country when we have these extreme events and then on the oh, and then we have down here malnutrition work capacity conflict and mental health illnesses and you can see there are people here who might be who are the communities who are being the, 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 the who are being relocated because of the the extreme weather events and we are told here persons with disabilities pre-existing or chronic uh, medical conditions and uh, low incomes, some occupational groups. And down here, we also told some communities of color, limited English proficiency, migrants, indigenous people. On the, on the left here, you can see the, the area is green and it's written up here, disruptions to ecosystems, worsened wildfires, lengthened pollen season. This one also brings the about uh, allergies and all that, spread of disease carrying insects, warmer waters and more rainfall, more dis uh, disease transmission. So all these things will cause allergies, asthma, food, water and insect borne diseases. And we are told here in, the, in blue here, sicknesses, injuries and deaths from extreme events 
and storm surges. So when you have floods, storms, droughts, and all that, you are, there will be injuries and there will be also sicknesses and uh, even death. So that these are the impacts of climate change on our human health. And you can see even here, they, you might even encounter mental health illnesses apart from these respiratory diseases and also deaths and injuries. So this is the last um, illustration we have today. And you can see is labeled carbon neutrality of biofuels. And on the left, you can see uh, how it starts. Fuel burnt in cars, you can see there's a car, and then CO2 or carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. You can see it increases and it becomes something big. And then on the other side, you can have it can be absorbed by by trees so it is important to plant trees so that they can absorb the co2 in the atmosphere or the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere atmosphere so that we can have uh, carbon neutrality and that's why we are being told to plant trees so that we can mitigate on climate change so if the more trees you have the more of this co2 in the atmosphere you be absorbed by the trees and then later you can use it as by fuel so that you are able to have carbon neutrality until next time bye